Final round of pool games and all bar one team have at least a mathematical chance of qualifying for the knockout stages. My name is Mark, let's talk rugby. Round four is the final round of pool games in this year's Champions Cup. You know, you got uh, teams all looking for, you know, different things. You have a group of teams who are basically battling out. They've already qualified. They're battling out at the top of the pools, looking for that home draw as far as they can throughout through the knockout stages. Then you have teams who are there, you know, almost there and just need, you know, a point or two to basically seal their qualification. You have teams then who have a realistic chance of qualifying who maybe just need to win win their game to go through then we have the other teams who you know they need to win their game but also have other results go their way and we have one team who no matter what they do they're not going to qualify so we're going to go basically go through all of the uh, fixtures for the weekend we'll talk about how the teams have done so far through the competition where they sit in their pool and what they actually need to qualify we won't go into the minutia of you know some a lot of a lot of the times there's possibilities of teams finishing on the same amount of points and then it comes down to points difference and stuff like that so we leave that to you know scenar- those kind of scenarios to if they happen then you, you can see on the day yourself because i'm sure the people in commentary if you're watching the game are going to be talking about that anyway that kind of uh, minutia as i said so I'm going to start with the Friday games. So these games both kick off at 8 p.m. GMT. And the first one is in Pool 3. It's Glasgow versus Toulon. So Glasgow have gone loss, win, loss. And Toulon have gone uh, loss, loss, loss. So Glasgow, they started out, they lost at home to Northampton. Then they beat Bayonne. And then they lost to Exeter. So, you know, they're currently fourth in the pool. And they've got five points. Toulon... They lost against Exeter, Northampton, and Munster. They're six in the pool with two points, but still have a chance to qualify. So Glasgow, pretty simple for them. Win the game, and they qualify. For Toulon, they have to win, and for Bayonne, not uh, to win. So they're one of the teams that are looking for a favour somewhere else. Looking at this, I would say that you know Glasgow have to be the favourites to progress out of these two. And, you know, um, it'll be good to see them getting into the knockout stages. How much further than that they go, you know, we'll have to see uh, in terms of what draw they get in those knockout stages. But I think it's good progress for this Glasgow team. You know, they made it to the, the Challenge Cup final last year and lost out in that. But, you know, it showed that they have the ability to put a run together in Europe and now if, if they can win this and, and go on to qualify it's something for the build on but then they have to make sure that they're qualifying year on year so it's not kind of lost progress for them so that's the pool three game pool one then we have Connacht versus Bristol so Connacht they uh, went loss 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 and that was against Bordeaux Saracens and Lyon they're in sixth place with just one point uh, Bristol went win, lost, loss. So they won against Lyon and then they lost against Bordeaux and the Bulls. They're in fourth place on five points. So Connacht, they, for them, it's a very kind of outside chance of uh, qualifying. Basically, they need to win with a bonus point, deny Bristol any kind of losing bonus point, and for Saracens to lose. So, you know, that's a lot to go their way for them to qualify. I'm sure they'll give everything because, you know, uh, Connacht, they're not the kind of team that will just think, oh, we're out of it. So it doesn't really matter. They they want to put on a performance, even if they're going to bow at a competition, they want to, to, you know, put on a show uh, at the sports ground. So you can expect them to, to really give it their all. Bristol, they need to basically uh, better Saracens result if it's tied, then it's going to come down to points difference, I think, between the two. So, you know, for them, um, they, they basically, if they win against Connacht, then um, 
you know, they've got a, a, a chance to go through, but they're going to want to win with a bonus point to give themselves the absolute best chance and put the pressure then on Saracens to have to, um, you know, win with a bonus point themselves. And after that, then, as I said, it's going to come down to, to points difference. So I think it's going to be an exciting game because of that. You're going to have Connacht looking to, you know, um, score free tries and play some nice rugby and Bristol looking to get that bonus point win. So, you know, it's not, I don't think it's going to be conservative kind of um, edgy kind of game. I think it's going to be high scoring. Connacht, we see them, you know, um, they're decent on attack, very porous on defence as well. And I'm expecting this to be kind of both teams, at least in the high 20s, maybe somewhere into the 30s in terms of points scored. And, you know, it's hard to call who's actually going to win the game. Um, I think Connacht being at home um, might give them just a bit of an edge and maybe just a little bit more over uh, Bristol, who do have the more risk, realistic chance of qualifying in terms of, of the, you know, the result. Um, but yeah, I think Connacht might actually win uh, this one. If they do, then Saracens uh, will have um, not necessarily qualified because, again, Connacht have the chance to qualify ahead of them, but it would make Saracens' um, job a lot easier. Um, for them on to the Saturday games then so the early kickoffs are at 1 uh, p.m. GMT so pool 2 Harlequins they went win loss win um, and that was base against one against Racing lost to Toulouse and one against Cardiff the third place in, uh, with 10 points Ulster then um, their opponents went loss win loss so they lost to Bath um, they beat Racing and then they got, you know, um, schooled really by Toulouse uh, at home at Kingspan last round as well. So they're fourth with five points. Harlequins already qualified, so they're just looking to to potentially um, put themselves in a position where they can actually have a, a home tie in the last uh, 16. Ulster, um, if they win, they should qualify, but it's, you know... It's going to be a tough game for Ulster. We haven't seen them all too often going away from home and putting in a really big performance. So this would be, you know, um, a big step up, I think, for this squad this season to be able to be able to do that. But at least they know it's it's fairly simple. They're not they're not sweating on other people. It's in their own hands. Although it's a tough task for them. Pool one, then you have the Bulls versus Bordeaux. So the Bulls have um, went win loss win. That was against uh, win against Saracens. They lost uh, to Lyon and then they uh, beat Bristol. They're third on ten points. Bordeaux um, went win win win. So they beat Connacht, Bristol, and Saracens. They're first on fifteen points, already qualified, and they're basically looking to you know get a, um, you know potentially top ranking um, for knockout stages and have a home ride all the way uh, potentially to the final on the back of that um, Bulls they need a win or a draw um, which will um, definitely qualify them losing bonus point as well um, and other than that if one of Saracens or Bristol um, don't get a bonus point win they qualify as well so you know they're one of those teams that are you know, you would say they're qualified, although it's not mathematically certain um, at the moment. A lot of things have to go against them, really, for them not to uh, qualify for knockout stages, but it's always a possibility. Then the uh, quarter past uh, 3 p.m., we have the next uh, couple of games. So in Pool 4, we have Leicester versus Leinster. These two always seem to get drawn together at some point, and... Um, Leicester went win-win loss. So they beat the Stormers, they beat Stade Francais, then they lost against La Rochelle last time out. And they're third on nine points. Leinster already qualified. They went win-win-win. They beat La Rochelle away. Great performance there. They, and then they beat um, understrength Sale and Stade Francais sides in, uh, in Dublin. And, you know, Again, you know, the, the first place, 14 points, but still not, 
you know, to my mind, not looking at the level that they were last year, but you know, the fact that they're they're improving as the season goes on, maybe that's going to be better for them. Maybe they're actually going to be, you know, in better form come the knockout stages or the, the latter stage of the knockout stages if they get there than they were in the final last year. But yeah, they're qualified for Leicester. Um, a win, obviously, and uh, they're going to qualify. If they get a losing bonus point, um, you know, it puts them in a, a decent position as well then to win. Um and if La Rochelle win, um, they're they're pretty much gonna gonna qualify as well, because you know, uh, and then La Rochelle, if um, if they if La Rochelle lose, then La Rochelle not get uh, two uh, bonus points from from that loss. So you know, if La Rochelle were to get two bonus points, it would be uh, losing by less than seven points and getting try bonus point. So a lot of uh, kind of room for Leicester there in terms of of qualification and you know basically if they lose the, it's it comes down to to what happens at the La Rochelle game and even with that like we would probably expect La Rochelle to win their game so Leicester will will probably um, be a team that are going to go into the last 16 in pool two then we have um Two teams who have not won or even um, have even drawn actually uh, this year. So Racing went loss, loss, loss against Harlequins, Ulster and Bath. Cardiff went loss, loss, loss against Toulouse, Bath and, and um, Harlequins. So Racing fifth place in, with three points. Cardiff sixth place with two points. So for Racing to qualify, they need to win and Ulster to lose without a losing bonus point. Um or bonus point win an Ulster to get uh, two or fewer uh, match points from their game. Um, so even with a win, they, they've got to you know rely on um, Ulster not doing too well in their game. For Cardiff, because they're one point less, it's even tougher for them. Um, they basically need um, to you know get get the win and Ulster. Uh, to get no more than one match point out of their out of their game as well. Um, so like the bonus point win for them, um, you know, based on the results so far, like they, I think they're the only thing that shift shifted more than fifty points um, in two games um, this season in the pool stages. So when it comes down to points difference, you know, uh, they they can't they have to basically have more match points than um ulster to to qualify and um to do that i think it's going to be yeah that uh, bonus point win and then ulster to basically to get uh, nothing out of their game um you know or at least uh, get no more than one match point from their game on to then um the 5 30 kickoff so we have um, in pool three, Munster versus Northampton. So Munster went draw, loss, win. So that draw against Bayonne in the um, f- first round, which really does look like um, that they dropped the ball in that game, the more we've seen of Bayonne in the competition. Exeter, um, who they lost against, and then Toulon, a really good win for, for Munster there. That leaves them in third on eight points. Northampton already qualified. They went win, win, win. They beat Glasgow, Toulon, and Bayonne, the first place, and they're one of those teams jostling for you know the highest ranking that you can get going into to the or the highest seeding, should I say, going into the knockout stages there on 14 points. So Northampton already qualified, and for them, they just need the win to put themselves up there with the other kind of pool leaders at the minute, um, and and try and get you know. Basically, the aim for anyone leading a pool right now should be getting into, you know, those top two rankings to potentially have a home semi-final. But for Munster, um, they need to win. Um, if they win, then they qualify. So that's pretty simple. And you know, if it wasn't like the pool leaders going for, you know. Uh, a quick clean sweep of the pool you probably back them for that but it's going to be a tough game a tough ask for them if they get a draw and Glasgow don't get a bonus point win um, 
then they qualify. And if Glasgow uh, lose, then um, they're going to qualify as well. So there, there is kind of a good scope for Munster to qualify there. Um, they'd obviously rather go through with a win and have it kind of be all in their own hands. But um, even if, you know, even if if they they lose, there's potential, and because you know Glasgow are playing um, before them, they will know exactly what they need to get anyway by the time that their game kicks off. But yeah, Munster got a proud record in Thomond Park, and they won't want to roll over and let Northampton um, beat them. They they won't want to qualify. Um, on the back of the defeat, really. Um, on to then uh, Pool 4. So we have Stade Francais versus Stormers. Stade Francais went loss, loss, loss. Uh, Stormers went loss, win, win. So Stad lost against Sale, Leicester, and then Leinster. They're sixth place. They have one point, and they're, they're that one team that are out of the competition. They don't have you know, any chance at all of qualifying mathematical or otherwise, um, unless like they find a genie who can um, work that out for them. But otherwise, yeah, they're out. Um, Stormers lost against Leicester. They beat La Rochelle, beat Sale. They're fourth on nine points. Um, for them, if they win, they, they, uh, they're going to progress. If they draw, they progress as well. And if Sale don't win, they progress. So plenty of... Um, avenues for them to go through and you know um kind of you know a, a decent um a decent chance really of, of them qualifying and and i would expect them uh to go through and you know even if even if they don't win uh this game or get the draw that they need they they're still um you know Sale are playing La Rochelle, so there's still a decent chance um, for them to to qualify there. And even with that, even if um, even if Sale win, there's still kind of mathematic stuff with them uh, to be able to potentially uh, qualify, depending on on other uh, results and and getting a losing bonus point and stuff like that as well. But that's kind of more. Um, Again, the kind of minutiae that we won't go too much into. On to then um, the, uh, what is it, next one? Oh, yeah, Pool 1 um, on uh, Saturday evening as well. So you have uh, Saracens versus Leon. So Saracens went loss, win, loss. So uh, lost to the Bulls, beat Connacht, and then uh, lost very heavily against Bordeaux last time out. Big big shock there, an amazing performance from Bordeaux as well. That leaves them in fifth place on five points. Lyon already qualified. They went loss, win, win. They lost to Bristol, um, you know, very close on that one. Then they beat the Bulls, and they beat Connacht. They're second on 12 points. So Lyon already qualified. And looking, you know, for maybe Bordeaux to slip up and to potentially win this to pip them to, uh, you know, do the uh, first place in the pool. Saracens basically need to better Bristol's result. If they're tied, then it's going to come down to points difference between those two, and it's actually pretty close between them as well. On to then the um, Sunday games. So one o'clock kickoff. In Pool 4, we have Sale versus La Rochelle. Sale have gone win-loss-loss. They beat Stade Francais. They lost to Leinster and lost to Stormers. They're in fifth on five points. La Rochelle um, went loss-loss-win. So loss against Leinster, loss against the Stormers. They beat Leicester last time out uh, pretty comfortably, actually. They're in fourth place with seven points. So Sale, for them, they get a win and they qualify. La Rochelle... Um, if if they win, um, they're gonna qualify as well. So so basically, it comes down to, um, you know, the winner takes all in this one. And then if La Rochelle draw, um, that should be enough for to see them through, um, with this the Stormers as well. On to uh, then the three fifteen kickoff pool two, um. Toulouse versus Bath, uh, both teams um, went win, win, win. 
Toulouse, they beat Cardiff, Harlequins, Ulster, they're first on 15 points. Bath um, beat Ulster, Cardiff and Racing, they're second also on 15 points. Both teams qualified and, you know, um, potentially, I would say uh, more than likely, the winner of this game is probably going to be the number one ranked team for the knockout stages. And the team that loses this one is going to be, um, you know, the the team that you, you kind of want to avoid if you're in that kind of middle pack um, of qualifiers because you don't want to get, you know, whoever loses this um, is obviously in really good form anyway and a really tough place to go when when you're kind of, you know, done, done pretty reasonably well in your pool rather than like obviously the winner of this is going to play a team that has just about scraped through. Um, and then the final game in pool three, and that's Bayonne versus Exeter. So Bayonne went draw, lost, loss. They drew against Munster, lost to Glasgow, lost, lost to Northampton. They are in fifth place on three points. Exeter already qualified, went win, win, win. They um, they beat Toulon, Munster and Glasgow. They're second in their pool on 13 points. Already gone through. And basically they, they're looking... To, you know um for a win and then potentially you know they could be in a position because they'll know all the other results by the time this game kicks off it could be in a position where they either need to to win or win with a bonus point to um you know finish top of the pool or it might be that they can't finish top of the pool but they'll want to win anyway just to you know uh get again the high ranking for the knockout stages for Bayonne a little more complicated um they need either um a bonus point win and Toulon to beat Glasgow which uh, that would be enough for them to qualify they need to win and um Toulon to um so just a regular win four point win and Toulon to beat Glasgow without uh, Glasgow getting a bonus point from um that and also for um what was the other one yeah so base basically yeah they, they need they need to um sorry they need to win and for uh glasgow not to get um a bonus point and for toulon not to get a bonus point out of that other game so it's you know um it's it's a bit more of a stretch i think for them um to qualify in there not impossible but you know again it's one of these ones where because it's the last game of the pool stages anyway by the time they kick off they're going to know exactly what what they need for that i would imagine that it's probably going to be um a bonus point win though um in the end or it might be that um if glasgow win they're not going to be able to qualify anyway so they know their fate one way or the other pretty much um you know before kick off or at least know what they need to do okay so that's all of the fixtures we're gonna have just have a quick look at the pools because we've gone through all the scenarios or most of the scenarios for the pools anyway but it's always good to get that picture of the pool so you can see for yourself who's qualified who has you know a decent chance um to qualify beyond that so pool one top there bordeaux um you know already qualified three wins out of three and they have 15 points looking like you know potential for um at the moment it looks like it's between them um and the winners of toulouse and bath for number one ranking for the knockout stages obviously things can can happen and you could get other teams the likes of Leinster and, and stuff actually coming in there depending on the way the results go but yeah um, these guys qualified Leon already qualified two wins and a loss 12 points and they're looking for Bordeaux to slip up really so that they can um, overtake them the Bulls there in third place on 10 points you know not mathematically there already but you would be very surprised if they didn't qualify and then bristol in fourth on five points saracens in fifth on five points so um more than likely one of those two will join um the top three in the knockout stages and then connacht there in sixth place with one point with a very kind of um outside chance of 
qualifying obviously need to win with a bonus point and then for the Saracens result to go their way as well. On to pool two then. So you have uh, Toulouse leading the way there. Three out of three, 15 points. Bath breeding out an Ecto. Three out of three as well on 15 points. And these two playing each other. So it's it's pretty simple. Winners, winner takes all is going to uh, lead the pool. And, and the team that loses that one is probably going to finish second obviously harlequins potentially could overtake them with with a big win but uh not very likely harlequins though in third place there on 10 points two wins and a loss already qualified um so you know they're kind of uh can breed a little in terms of their their you know final game against ulster ulster though uh that's a massive game for them they have um in four place there one win and two losses they got five points but they just they know if they beat Quinns, they they qualify because the last two there Rassing and cardiff will not be able to catch them Rassing in fifth place on three points cardiff in sixth place on two points so you can see from there basically their target is ulster and so both of them wants want ulster to lose their game and then if ulster do lose their game then the winner of their tie will qualify. So, you know, it's kind of a three-way shootout really for that last qualifying spot there. On to then um, pool three. And so we got Northampton Saints at the top there, already qualified in first place. Three wins out of three, they got 14 points. Exeter in second place, three wins out of three as well on 13 points. And you know, uh, basically Exeter want Munster to do them a favour and then they win their own game and they're going to qualify as pool winners. Northampton want to go to Thoman Park, win their game and just guarantee themselves um, top spot in the pool. Munster, they're there in third place with a win, a draw and a loss on eight points, not mathematically through yet. And, you know, Saints coming there is a tough game for them, but... You know, they've got a bit of a cushion on, you know, uh, Bayonne down there with three points. So you would expect them if Munster get, you know, um, any anything at all in terms of match points from the game, they will qualify. Glasgow in four points on five points. At the moment, um, you know, best situated to qualify, but you would expect that, you know, um, th- they'll be looking for a win just to to make sure of that but still um you know things can go against them as well and then at the bottom there um in fifth place you have bayonne on three points and sixth we have toulon on two points both looking to um first of all like between each other they've you know they've, they've got to better each other's results and then um they need as well um you know for other results to go their way too. So not um, an easy route through for either of those teams, but it is possible. And a lot of it kind of rests on, you know, um, basically um, Glasgow, because as I said, I think Munster are going to go through. So it's probably going to be one of the the other three there between Glasgow, Bayonne and uh, Toulon. And really with that, you're you're looking at that Glasgow Toulon um, game on Friday, and that you know pretty much it looks complicated at the moment, but it could be all um, solved on Friday evening if Glasgow win that game. Then um, the other two don't really have uh, well Toulon obviously um, won't won't have a chance because they have just lost to Glasgow. But beyond it becomes much harder for them. They've got to somehow get get on uh above Munster then um and that means you know uh hockey and Exeter which is not very likely um on to pool four then so you got Leinster there at the top already qualified uh the only um team in this pool who've mathematically mathematically qualified so far three wins out of three on 14 points they can't really be caught um for first place obviously mathematically they can but you you would be very surprised if, if other teams can actually outdo that points difference that they have uh, given that both the Stormers and Leicester have negative uh, points difference. Obviously Leicester have the the uh, kind of added bonus for them at least 
of playing Leinster so any uh, points difference that they can put up above them um, will count double but it's still they've got to put up a big big win so we can almost certainly say that Leinster are going to qualify first um, Stormers and Leicester both in you know, in second and third both on nine points two wins and a loss for both of them you expect both of them to um, progress like it's kind of you know um, would be kind of strange for one of them to drop down um to fifth place at this stage but it is possible for that to happen um it just takes a lot of results going certain ways for that for that to happen la rochelle then in fourth place you'd expect them to keep that they're one win and two losses there uh and with you know seven points there but it feels like it's basically a shootout between themselves and sale um and and they're playing each other as well so so you know you're expecting that the winner of that game is then going to um, qualify along with the stormers and tigers obviously there are other mathematical ways for um the stormers and tigers potentially one of them to be eliminated but um not very likely basically la rochelle um you know would have to get a, a um two losing bonus points um against sale to put them on nine points and then their points difference potentially would would put them over the other two and then sale would have to, to beat them with um to, or to, sorry to beat them and then go on to um nine match points as well so you potentially you could end up with um three teams on nine match points and then coming down to points difference but that's kind of a you know um you, by the time that game happens we'll know whether that's possible or not um, but it certainly would be an exciting end to the pool if it did happen and then we have Stade Francais there at the bottom um, they have um, one point there but you can see that La Rochelle on seven points so the maximum that Stade Francais can get to is six match points so that's why they're the only team who have been eliminated so far obviously there is that chance of finishing fifth and dropping down into the uh, challenge cup for them rather than being completely eliminated from european rugby but in terms of this competition there's no uh, path for them to progress so that is our um, preview for the um, round four of the pool stages it's going to be exciting stuff we're probably going to be looking towards the end of the pools in terms of who's getting eliminated rather than the top of the pools um and that's just the way um it is when you have so many teams qualifying you know um from the from you know the um groups or from the pools sorry um your your eye is just drawn down to that kind of fourth fifth place for that and after that then next week we will have um review of the round and a look at kind of the draw as well for the knockout stages which will be in april and after that then kind of our focus turns more towards the six nations but you know it looks like it's going to be an exciting round of rugby here so let me know who you think um you know of the teams who at the moment aren't qualifying so those in fifth and sixth place who you think has the best chance of actually getting through